Imagine this, you're drifting in the dark silence of space. No sound, no friction, no boundaries, just the hum of your thoughts and the faint glimmer of starlight, each one millions of years old. Somewhere out there, light from a dying star is racing toward you, the fastest thing in the universe. But what if something could outrun even that? What if there were a way to fold space, skip time, and slip past the cosmic speed limit itself? For over a century, Einstein's theory of relativity has stood as an unbreakable rulebook, a cosmic contract written in the geometry of space-time. Yet, within those equations, physicists keep finding loopholes, cracks, and whispers of something more. Maybe the universe isn't saying you can't. Maybe it's saying you just haven't figured out how yet. Ever since humans first looked up at the stars, we've been obsessed with one idea, speed. The faster we move, the farther we can go, and the more of the universe we can explore. But there's one ultimate limit one cosmic speed barrier that seems impossible to break, the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. That's a number so large, it's almost meaningless to our everyday lives. Yet in the universe, it's sacred, the ultimate speed limit. According to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, nothing with mass can ever reach, let alone exceed, the speed of light. But what if that rule could be bent or even broken? What if someday, humanity could go faster than light. Let's start with what light speed actually means. When you flip a switch, photons, particles of light, shoot out at about 299,792 kilometers per second. That's about seven and a half times around the Earth in a single second. Nothing else we know of can move that fast. If you fired a bullet at that speed, it would cross the entire United States in less than a thousandth of a second. Light's velocity isn't just a fast number. It's the foundation of how reality behaves. In Einstein's equations, the speed of light doesn't just describe how light moves. It's the maximum rate at which any information, energy, or cause and effect can travel through space-time. Here's why that's such a big deal. As you accelerate closer to the speed of light, strange things begin to happen. Time itself starts to slow down. Your mass, or rather, your resistance to acceleration, increases. The faster you go, the harder it becomes to accelerate even more. The energy you need grows exponentially. At exactly the speed of light, you would need infinite energy. That's the wall. That's why, according to relativity, nothing made of matter can ever quite get there. It's like chasing a horizon that always runs away faster than you can move. But humans don't like the word impossible. And physics has a way of hiding possibilities inside impossibilities. So let's push this idea a little further. What if there were loopholes in the laws of physics? Ways to move faster than light without technically breaking the rules? Because here's the trick. Einstein never said space itself couldn't move faster than light, only that objects within space couldn't. The universe itself, on the grandest scales, already does this. In the early moments after the Big Bang, the universe underwent something called cosmic inflation. In a tiny fraction of a second, the fabric of space expanded faster than the speed of light. Galaxies weren't racing through space. Space itself was stretching, carrying them apart. Even today, distant galaxies move away from us faster than light due to the expansion of the universe. It doesn't violate relativity because nothing is actually traveling through space at superluminal speeds. It's space that's doing the moving. That leads to one of the most mind-bending ideas in theoretical physics, the warp drive. Imagine a spacecraft that doesn't fly through space, but instead bends space around it. It compresses space in front and expands it behind, creating a bubble that rides the waves of space-time itself. Inside the bubble, you wouldn't feel like you're moving at all, but to an outside observer, you'd appear to be moving faster than light. This concept is known as the Alcubierre drive, named after the Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre, who proposed it in 1994. The equations show that it's theoretically possible, but there's a massive catch, and it's not just engineering. To warp space that way, you'd need a kind of energy that doesn't behave like anything we've ever seen, negative energy density, or exotic matter. In ordinary matter, energy is positive. It curves space in one direction. Negative energy would curve it the other way. Quantum physics suggests that negative energy might exist in very small amounts, such as in the Casimir effect a quantum phenomenon that occurs between two very close plates in a vacuum. But the amount you'd need to power a warp bubble is astronomical. Early estimates suggested you'd need more energy than the entire observable universe contains. Later refinements reduced that to maybe the mass energy of Jupiter. Still, it's far beyond our capabilities, for now. But let's say we could somehow harness negative energy. If we could manipulate space-time itself, would faster-than-light travel really be possible? Here's where things get even stranger. When you move faster than light, relativity predicts something astonishing. You could theoretically move backward in time. Faster than light travel and time travel are deeply connected. In some reference frames, an object traveling faster than light would arrive before it left. 
cause and effect would reverse, it breaks one of the most fundamental principles of physics, causality. And once causality breaks, paradoxes start to appear. What happens if you go back and stop yourself from leaving? What if information arrives before it's sent? These contradictions make most physicists think nature has built-in mechanisms to prevent true, faster-than-light motion. Still, nature gives us glimpses of what's possible at the edge of these rules. In the quantum world, particles sometimes seem to cheat the speed limit. Quantum entanglement allows two particles to remain connected, no matter how far apart they are. Change one, and the other reacts instantly. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. To him, it looked like information traveling faster than light, but it's not, at least not in the way we understand information. No usable signal is actually sent. The universe simply reveals correlations that were already encoded at the quantum level. It's as if reality knows how to keep its secrets while giving us hints that the deeper structure of space and time might be far stranger than we imagine. There are also phenomena like quantum tunneling, where particles seem to jump through barriers faster than light would take to cross them. But again, the effect doesn't allow for transmitting information or energy superluminally. It's more like a statistical trick of the quantum world, not a real shortcut for us to use. Still, the allure remains. Across decades of science fiction, we've dreamed of warp drives, hyperspace jumps, wormholes, and tachyons, hypothetical particles that always move faster than light. Tachyons would have imaginary mass and could never slow down to light speed, the same way we can never speed up to it. But if tachyons existed, they'd break causality and make the universe mathematically unstable. No evidence for them has ever been found. For now, they live only in the equations and in our imagination. And yet, imagination matters. Every great leap in science began with an idea that seemed impossible. When physicists explore the boundaries of relativity, they're not trying to defy Einstein. They're testing how far his ideas can go before reality pushes back. In doing so, they often discover new principles. For instance, studying warp drives and wormholes has deepened our understanding of space-time, energy, and the quantum vacuum. Even if we never build a warp ship, these ideas might help us uncover the true nature of gravity itself, a mystery that's still unsolved after more than a century. Let's picture it for a moment, though. A civilization that has mastered space-time. Maybe in a distant future, humanity learns to manipulate energy on cosmic scales. Maybe we discover a way to generate stable negative energy, and with it, create tiny distortions in space. We learn to stretch space behind a ship and squeeze it ahead, creating a ripple, a space-time wave we can surf. Inside the bubble, time passes normally. Outside, the stars blur past faster than light. You could cross the galaxy in weeks, explore other star systems, even reach galaxies millions of light years away, all without breaking the cosmic speed limit because, from your point of view, you never actually moved faster than light. You simply moved with space-time itself. That dream is far beyond what our current technology allows, but it's not beyond thought. Theoretical physicists continue to refine the math searching for ways to make warp metrics require less energy. Some papers suggest the energy requirement might be drastically lower with clever geometry or quantum effects. Others propose alternatives, shortcuts like traversable wormholes, which are essentially natural warp tunnels connecting distant points of space. If either idea could ever be stabilized, faster-than-light travel would no longer belong to fiction. For now, though, we're still bound by Einstein's cosmic rule. The speed of light remains the great barrier, not a wall to be smashed through, but a boundary that defines how our universe works. It's humbling and beautiful at the same time, because within that limit lies the reason why cause and effect exist, why time flows forward, and why the cosmos has order instead of chaos. Light speed is not just a number, right? It's the universe's way of keeping everything consistent. But perhaps the most inspiring part is this, even if we never move faster than light, understanding why we can't has already transformed humanity. It's taught us that time and space are not separate, that energy and mass are interchangeable, and that the fabric of reality itself is flexible. Einstein's speed limit isn't a prison, it's a map of what's possible, and every time we push against it, we uncover something new about who we are and the universe we live in. Maybe one day, a far future civilization will look back at us and smile, the way we look at the first humans who dreamed of flying. To them, the speed of light may be a stepping stone, not a boundary. They'll surf the fabric of space-time itself, leaving streaks of light across the stars. And when they do, it will be because we, here and now, dared to ask the question, can we go faster than the speed of light? The speed of light, the one constant that anchors the universe. We've chased it with rockets, measured it with lasers, and tried to bend it with math. It's more than a number. It's the edge of what we know, the horizon of possibility. Maybe we'll never break it. Maybe that's not the point. Because understanding why we can't 
might be the key to unlocking everything else, time, gravity, even consciousness itself. The light barrier isn't a wall, it's a mirror, showing us how much farther our curiosity can reach. And until the day we learn to ride the fabric of space-time itself, the question will remain, not as a limit, but as a challenge. Can we go faster than light?